Is a terrible thing to waste. Hello everyone. This is Charlie B. Perkinson, coming at you with some new flavor that I decided to undertake. What I'm about to do might get me in a whole lot of trouble but this is a chance I'm gonna have to take. Eighteen years ago, Bryant wrote a collection of poems titled The Mood Swinger and the book was definitely worth a read. Today, I will be stealing some of these poems and touching them up with some of these ideas that are running around in my head. I am of sound mind and body and recognize that this borrowing of Bryant's thoughts could be considered a form of copyright infringement, but I really don't care. I'm gonna do my best to be the best that I can be, even though I know that I'm in the wrong and the consequences I'm gonna have to bear. During this time of me entertaining you, I will be covering a variety of subjects and I'm pretty sure that many of you will be able to relate. As I do in all my writings, I will not specifically try to expose a particular individual, but if the slippers fit, put them on and then step up to the plate. So that you know where I'm coming from, I'm gonna be sharing words of wisdom. Poems from Mr. P and music, to brighten up the point, I'm trying to make. With that said and done, I am now ready, to shake and bake this cake. All of you, out there, that is listening to my voice, I wanna ask you a question and I can already anticipate, that a lot of you, are gonna think, that it wasn't just. As a child growing up and you attending school, do you really think, that it was, a high priority must? A dear friend of mine named, Will Durant, once said and I quote, Education, is a progressive discovery of our, ignorance. After reading that powerful statement, I went into, a temporary trance. On January 21, 1992, this poem, that is titled, School, I'll Be There, was written by Brian and it made me think, Any of you, got a problem with me, taking a sip, from my drink? There are many reasons why I don't want to go to school and not a single one of them do I consider to be legit. How could I not desperately yearn the opportunity to become academically fit? If not, for no other reason, I want to go to school so that I can relate to conversations on various degrees. I have my mind made up to study hard and not to settle for any grades that are less than A's and B's. I really want to go to school, so that I, can perfect the art of reading, writing, the arts, and math. I want to go to school, so that I, can be all, that I can and continue, to head down, that intellectual path. Being hungry for knowledge, on a constant basis, is a stimulation, that pleases, not only the body and soul but also, the mind. You're never too old, to learn, and if you sincerely, seek out a particular knowledge, then in due time, it, you will find. If nothing else, you remember in life, a mind, is a terrible asset, to waste. Learning, is a lifelong continuance and you don't, have to go about it, in haste. When you write, do you remember, to dot the I's and cross the T's? If I were to catch you off guard, would you be able, to recite your ABCs? I'm not here, criticizing any of you, on your reading and writing skills. How you read and write, is your own business and, I'm not the one, that's paying your bills. Another friend of mine named, Benjamin Franklin, once said and I quote, 
If a man empty his purse into his head, no man can take it away from him. An investment in knowledge always pays the best interest. I've got some soundtracks coming your way, so take a minute to listen and learn. Take are you an essay writer? Or do you prefer fiction? Concrete, abstract, vivid descriptions. Let's use these words to document real life. Collect your thoughts, grab a pen, sit down and write. Sit down and write. Sit down and write. Sit down and write. Collect your thoughts, grab a pen, sit down and write. Sit down and write. Sit down and write. Sit down. Periods must be present. For instance, I went to the store. I bought some milk, some OJ, and nothing more. A question mark goes right after. Guess what? A question. Do you know what that means? Question mark. Yeah, that's the lesson. An exclamation point shows surprise, pain, or anger. Exclamation point. I just pinched my finger. An apostrophe replaces the letters that get denied in a contraction. That's when you got two words combined. Apostrophes also show possession. That isn't Mary's pen. There are two apostrophes in that expression. Yo, what's the deal with these dots and dashes? Well, let's slow it down. No more further ado, I proudly present to you Verb tense says Through a series of sentences That'll help you run through what the business is And then you'll learn it with the quickness So just hold on to your britches Cause we're about to get in it Get with it, we're gonna begin with the sample Let's come on, do it, I'm doing it I have done it, past, present, and future Without it, I'm done with it Sit back, sit back As triple law presents this knowledge Which can be common sense It's verb tense says Do it, doing it, I have done it We call the action words Anything you can do Even if it's absurd Whenever you eat, drink, do, think No will stop Even if you just are That's a verb that you got Yeah Another part of speech we call adverbs Like loudly, proudly, and well Don't ask me why, but most of them end in L-Y so you wanna know about nouns You wanna know about verbs And you probably know that there are several of the types of words So if you yearn to learn A, recite to teach Now listen up and let me tell you about the part Geo means earth and vita means life Let's hit the next topic so y'all can get it right Yo, words of power and that's the truth Prefixes, suffixes, and they all got roots Yes, words of power, they run this town So let's run a track back and break them on down Yes, words of power and that's the truth Prefixes, suffixes, and they all got roots Yo, words of power, they run this town So let's run a track back and break them on down You wanna know what's next, it's the prefix step The initial portion of a term of object interact with the crowd in public speaking you need the same types of things it's important to keep the audience engaged so use eye contact make sure you look around don't just stare at the page of the sky or the ground keep a steady pace make sure you don't rush project your voice don't let it be hot because you could have some great points to convey but they mean nothing if we can't hear what you say humor is a great way to break the ice and to emphasize your point hand gestures and nice and you can make your talk stronger with visual aids like a powerpoint photo or a graphic Assonance could be a handful. Sometimes what you mean is not exactly what you say. That's figurative language using words in different ways. Personification, alliteration, assonance, and hyperbole. Automatopoeia, metaphor, and simile. A simile is something that you use to compare two unrelated things with an element that's shared. My mind is like an ocean, it's as smooth as jazz. Are they just chillin'? Nope, not really though. Some of them are static, so the flat one dimensional. Nothing more dramatic than people with drama are called the dynamic characters. Like if they start out calm and get hysterical, or if they start out in love and end up not. That's the motion and the motion that propels the plot. Fear not, I'll tell you in verse three. Here's how it goes, writing fiction for prose. We got a character, the setting, and of course the plot. It's the elements of fiction that I'm talking about. We got the characters, the setting, and of course the plot. It's the elements. On the link, but establish the strength of the argument you're trying to make. Do you know what a paragraph is? It's a bunch of sentences that express one continuous thought. So now I think you can take it from here, and you won't have any fear if you just remember what you've been taught. It's not fiction. It's non fiction. Uh, it's not fiction. Yeah, we keeping it real. Nothing fake. Only opinions and facts to reveal. It's not fiction. It's non fiction. Uh, to a couple of wordplay.
play styles that change the sound What usually happens we see all the time The words sound alike at the end of the lines But it goes even deeper from there There's a variation in the styles of the rhymes that we hear That's perfect and off rhymes But we can break it down more So much in store Just take a time Me, me in the mode. Me is the average. Me in is the middle. Mode is the most frequent. It can be big or little. Me is the average. Me in is the middle. Mode is the most frequent. Plain and simple. We wanna analyze a group of data and a set. Me, me to get a mode of useful numbers to get. Let's try a small set of numbers. Just a few. Six, one, five, six, two. Now, if you wanna find a mean, just add them up and divide by the number of numbers. That Yo. Yo. Yo, it's your boy Boots, Boots. repping the triple R. R. We got 50 state capitals. Let's do it to him, Art. Yo, listing capitals is so much fun for me. In Alabama, you got Montgomery. And in Alaska, you know you knows the boss. Phoenix and Arizona, Little Rock and Arkansas. In California, we got Sacramento. Then we go to Denver, out in Colorado. Hartford, Connecticut, Dover, Delaware. Listen to all the state capitals everywhere because 50 states got 50 state capitals. All around the country, man, it's transnational. Trying to list them all might sound irrational. But you gotta start somewhere Down in Florida We got Tallahassee Atlanta and Georgia Honolulu Hawaii Boise Idaho I don't know the next one Capital of Illinois Springfield's the correct one Indianapolis Indiana Des Moines Iowa And then Topeka down in Kansas Frankfort Kentucky Then Louisiana's got Baton Rouge and we keep running through all the 50 states got 50 state capitals All around the country, man, it's transnational Trying to list them all might sound irrational But you gotta start somewhere Augusta, Maine, Annapolis, Maryland Boston, Massachusetts, and Lansing, Michigan St. Paul, Minnesota, then Jackson, Mississippi And in Missouri, it's Jefferson City Helena the capital of Montana, Lincoln, Nebraska, Carson City, Nevada, Concord, New Hampshire, Trenton, NJ, and down in New Mexico, we got Santa Fe. In New York, we're talking about Albany, and then Raleigh, NC, Bismarck, ND, in Ohio, Columbus leads the way, and then Oklahoma City in the state of OK. And Salem is the capital of Oregon, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, let's keep it moving on. Next is Providence in Rhode Island, then Columbia down in South Carolina. 50 states got 50 state capitals, all around the country, man, it's transnational. Trying to list them all might sound irrational, but you gotta start somewhere. Ayo, hey, PSD, Nashville, Tennessee, Austin, Texas, Salt Lake City, UT, Montpelier, Vermont, Richmond, in Virginia, the state of Washington with the city of Olympia, Charleston, West Virginia, we're almost done, Wisconsin's capital, you know it's Madison, then it's Sydney in Wyoming, that's called Cheyenne, but let's let the chorus come round again, it goes, 50 states got 50 state capitals, all around the country, man, it's transnational, trying to list them all might sound irrational, but you gotta start somewhere. It's your boy Boots. Just did a quick tour of the whole country. Hope y'all remember this. Cause you know, 50 states do got 50 state capitals. That's how we do things.